Good evening and once again, Happy New Year to you. And my prayer for you is that 2008 will be the best year yet in your life. And we don't know what, uh, what the year will bring. We don't know what the year will bring as far as national events are concerned, world events. We don't know exactly what the future is, but we do know who holds the future. Amen? Amen. And so we'll trust in our Lord. He's promised, as Alan uh, prayed, he's promised to be with us and take care of us. Here's a little something you see occasionally in church bulletins. It goes like this. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. Today is a gift. Well, we've been talking about today. We've been talking about yesterday. And we've been talking about tomorrow. And here's what we learn from the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. He said, I do not count myself as having arrived. He said, I'm not going to rest on my laurels. I know that the Lord has brought me this far by His love and by His power and by His grace and mercy. But I'm forgetting the things of the past. And when he talks about forgetting the things of the past, he's talking about his past mistakes. And if you're familiar with the story of the Apostle Paul, you know he was a man who deliberately, on purpose, persecuted Christians and even approved of their death. He even went to the government and got permission to go to another town and arrest Christians and bring them back to be imprisoned. And Paul had a tough time getting over his past because after becoming a Christian and after being selected by God to be an apostle to the Gentiles, he kept on talking about how that he was the chief of sinners. He said in 1 Timothy 1.15, this is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptance, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. That's how he felt about himself. But now he says, I'm forgetting the past and I'm pressing toward the future and the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I like what he says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Read this with me, please. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. New. So we were talking about renewal in this morning's sermon, and we were talking about um, New Year's resolutions and things like that. Uh, did you realize that there is an exercise uh, a website? You probably would have imagined that, since there's a website for everything. Uh, this comes from um, a medical review board. It's uh, about exercise.com. And it's the top ten New Year's resolutions for those who are thinking about uh, turning over a new leaf and putting a little exercise in their life. I'll read you just a few of them. I will stop using my treadmill as an extra closet. Ooh, so that's where my shirt went. And use it for the purpose for which it was designed as soon as I can remember what it was. I will not sneer at the aerobics instructor as his or her ultra perky voice and fatless body. Uh, uh, well, uh, and perky voice and fatless body. Rather, I will use him or her as motivation. I will get up every morning to exercise instead of waiting until after work when I inevitably find a reason not to go to the gym. I will not eat any more sweets at work no matter whose birthday it is, or how good that chocolate cake looks. In fact, I'm never eating sweets again. Ha ha. I will cook healthy meals every night and calculate my calories so that I know exactly what I'm eating. I will begin using tofu and making my own rice. 
You can smile at this if you want to. These, these are intended to be um, a, a, a bit of a stretch. I will strengthen my relationships by getting my friends slash family to exercise with me as soon as they stop laughing. Well, okay. Resolutions, whatever they might be. Um, Steve Ryder says about resolutions that, number one, less is more. Don't try to make too many resolutions because that only leads to disappointment. It makes you feel like a failure. He talks about prioritizing. Uh, putting first things first, keeping the main thing the main thing, uh, making sure that we are pursuing the most important things. And, of course, you know where I'm going with this, and that is put the Lord first in your life. That's the, that's the number one resolution that each and every person needs to make. He talks about planning for success, and he says, um, uh, assuming that you can do this by yourself when you haven't been able to do it uh, in the past, is a ticket to the land of disappointment. Get help by that to get someone to support you. Surround yourself with those who will encourage you. And then he says, go ahead and celebrate. Uh, don't, don't put off the celebration. Um, another expert on resolutions, uh, prioritizing and so forth, says, um, uh, first of all, prioritize your, um, your New Year's resolutions. Create a plan, number two. Number three, write it down. Number four, set time limits, uh, a schedule, a deadline, a year, a date, or something like that. Involve a friend for a support system. Announce publicly what you intend to do. Create a visual, a picture or something to keep in front of you. Remain flexible. Realize that things change, uh, things beyond your control. Monitor your progress. Keep an eye on how you're doing. And when you fail, fail forward. Which simply means that you fall in the direction in which uh, you want to be going. So that's some good practical advice for New Year's resolutions. Well, all that's all right, I guess. Talking about exercise and diet and the such like. But I happen to have a book in my hands right now that is the best advice of all. Amen? What does the psalmist say about The Word of God. Well, he says in Psalm 119, verse 105, that the Word of God is a lamp to my feet and a light to my pathway. And by the way, when he wrote those words, talking about a lamp, he was talking about a clay pot with uh, oil in it. And um, he was talking about a rather small flame. And what he was saying is that it illuminates what's directly in front of you. The things that you can actually see. And in and, and the scripture guides you and teaches you how to handle these things. Now, you can't see way out there in the dark. God knows what's out there. And he'll take care of you and he'll handle all that for you. But you just watch where your footsteps are going right now. And what he's saying is that if you'll allow the word to guide your life. And the and the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the comparison right here is the guide your footsteps, which means guide the way you live. Then he's saying you won't miss heaven. This book will not take you any other place except to the pearly gates. It'll take you to heaven, to eternal life. And so allow the word of God to guide you and to shape your life because the Bible is the word of God. So I want to point out tonight four scriptures, and this won't be a very uh, lengthy message, I don't think, unless I, uh, sometimes I just, you know, I get excited about something and I talk longer than I intend to. But I want to, I want to point out four scriptures to you tonight, and they all are following the theme we started with this morning, which is the theme of renewal, to be new again, just like he was talking about. Paul was in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. He says, old things are passed away when you're in Christ and all things have become new. And so, number one, the scripture says that God will, if we will allow him to do so, will renew our strength. Renew our strength. And so let's go to the Old Testament for this. And this is that fabulous passage in Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 40. And I'll begin reading. And verse 28, have you not known, 
Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. He never gets tired. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Now, this is in the take this uh, to, with, with a spiritual meaning. Uh, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. See that word renew? They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so the scripture says that you can be renewed in your strength. The Bible also says we can be renewed in our mind, in the attitude of our mind. Let's go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. And here's what he says, beginning in verse 22. He says that you put off concerning your former conduct. And what former conduct means, your, your, the way you used to live. Maybe the way you've been living up until right now. You lay that aside. You turn away from it. Uh, that's, that involves repentance. Repentance means to make a conscious decision to, to change your life. Uh, to stop doing some things and to start doing other things. You know, the, uh, the reason that penitentiaries are called penitentiaries are, is because... They were intended in, in the original concept to create an environment where people are penitent. And, and they, they are demonstrating that they are penitent by losing their freedom and being imprisoned because uh, they need to live a life because of certain bad choices they've made in which they demonstrate that they are repentant. So that's what a penitentiary is. And so the scripture says... Uh, that we need to repent, put away the old person and the old way of living. Put off uh, your, your, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. In verse 23, and be renewed. See that word renewed? And be renewed in the spirit or the attitude of your mind. Now notice, the scripture not only teaches that the Lord, if we will yield to him, if we will put him in our life, if we will, if we, if we will draw near to him, he will draw near to us, the scripture says, and that he will renew our strength and he will renew our mind. A new way of thinking, a new way of considering life and how you approach life and how you deal with difficulties, problems, challenges, disappointment, heartache. And all other things that come our way in this world. And then the scripture says, he will renew our relationship with him. This is Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Now this is written by David, the great King David. And, but David, just like you and me, was a person who needed the Lord because left to his own devices... And left to his own choices, he got himself in trouble, just like you and I are going to get ourselves in trouble if we decide to be the Lord of our own life. If you want to be the Lord of your life, guess what? You're going to mess things up horribly. And I realize that we live in a culture where we say, i got to be me, and i got to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And what about me, we say? But the Bible says the way of man is not in himself. That's Jeremiah 10, 23. What it means is that uh, man is not able to direct his own footsteps. Now, you can direct your own footsteps, but they'll take you in a direction you don't need to go and you'll destroy yourself. And so we need the Lord to direct our footsteps. And, and we need him to, to help us. Well, David was a man who made some bad choices, bad decisions. And that's another sermon for another day, but it's about his, his sin with Bathsheba. And then the, uh, the orchestrating of the death of her husband. 
Uh, and, but, but, and, and, and now David has lost his relationship with the Lord. And remember, when a person loses their relationship with the Lord, it's never the Lord who broke the relationship. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never be unfaithful to you. When a relationship is broken between a human being and God Almighty, it's because that human being broke the relationship. And that's what happened to David. But then Bill Clinton, you know, he said he was the comeback kid back in 1992. But David is the original comeback kid. He's the one who, after he saw what a mess he had made of his life, and as he was grieving uh, over the broken relationship between him and his God, who had been so good to him and blessed him in so many ways, he starts making this spiritual comeback. He says, I want to cuddle up to the Lord again. I need him in my life. I must have him in my life. Without him, I'm nothing. And so we, this, this, this is what's going on in Psalm chapter 51. As David is coming clean and saying, I need a renewed relationship with you, Lord. He says in verse 7, purge me. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy and gladness that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. There's renew again. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. So here's a man who says... I am guilty of breaking the relationship that I once had with my God. And now I'm asking for that relationship to be healed, to be mended, to be restored. I'm asking for renewal. I'm asking for the same relationship that I had with Him in the beginning, before I broke Not only our relationship, but before I broke his heart and ruined my own life. And now, Lord, I want to come back. And I'm asking you to wash me. I'm asking you to clean me. I'm asking you to purge me. I'm asking you to give me that joy uh, that I had for so long before I broke the relationship. He will renew our strength, Isaiah 40 Verses 28 and following. He will renew our mind. Ephesians 4, 22 and following. He will renew our relationship. Psalm 51, verse 7 and following. And the scripture says, He will renew our spirit. Let's look at that in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. This is verse 16. And following. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Now, that statement is made several times in the New Testament. Do not lose heart. It's used effectively and powerfully in Galatians chapter 6. But right now, let's stay in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man... Is perishing. Our outward man is perishing. That means this physical body uh, that our spirit is housed in is wearing out. Um, I mean, have you, for those of you who are adults, have you uh, been by a mirror lately? I mean, have you just kind of noticed what's happening to us? Well, the outward man is perishing day by day. Yet, listen to this next verse, the inward man or the inward person, that's the real you, that's your spirit, that's who you really are, is being renewed day by day. 
The inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. This body that we're in is temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal, eternal. And so it's that eternal part of us that is being renewed day by day. You say, I wish I could be forever young. My friend, if you are in Christ, all things have passed away. You are a new creation. All things have become new. And you, the real you, the spirit that lives in this aging body, is being renewed day by day, forever young. And that's why the Bible talks about eternal life. As being an existence where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more death, no more heartache, no more disappointment. You'll not be weary. You'll not faint. You'll never be discouraged. Forever young. He'll renew your strength. He'll renew your mind. He'll renew your relationship with Him if you will allow Him. And He will renew your spirit day by day, keeping you young forever. Go ahead and make a few resolutions. I would encourage you to do so. It might be about exercise. It might be about diet. It might be Something that's going to lead you to be a better person as far as the family member that you are, uh, the, the, the employee that you are, or the employer, the neighbor, whatever it is, the student, the teacher. Are there ways in which you can benefit from some good New Year's resolutions? But just remember that real renewal, the kind that allows you to put the past behind you. And to look to the future with delight comes only from the Lord. I mean, when it really counts, that's the kind of renewal that we're looking for. That's what we need. And that's what the Lord offers to us in such an abundant way. This morning we sang a song, I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have a Lord my sight. And so as we prepare, when is it? 12.01 tomorrow night, I guess it is, uh, for the birth of 2008. Let's make sure uh, that we are right with the Lord, that our hearts, that our minds, that our lives are right with the Lord. And right now is a good opportunity for you to make any decision that you need to make. It might be requesting prayers. It might be, uh, uh, it might be uh, seeing the need and making a decision to be restored and renewed in your relationship with the Lord. It could be if you've not yet received baptism for forgiveness of sin. But tonight's the night because as we studied in class this morning, in our Bible class, in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and following, the Bible says that we become new creatures walking in newness of life when we have been cleansed by the innocent blood of Jesus Christ. What do you need to do uh, to start a new life? To start to turn over a new leaf? To begin again and to be new again? Whatever that is, whatever you need from the Lord, He's reaching out to you right now. And He wants to bless you and help you. Would you come to Him while together we stand and sing?